Mirrors in my head, I fear That the thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature And it haunts me somewhere much deeper The white woman who accused Emmett Till of accosting her at a general store has died. It comes 68 years after the teenage boy was brutally tortured and killed. Carolyn Bryant Donham passed away Tuesday at a hospice care in Louisiana. She was 88 years old. Till was only 14 when he left Chicago to visit relatives in Mississippi. Bryant testified that he made a sexually suggestive remark and grabbed her waist. But decades later, Bryant admitted she perjured herself to make Till's behavior sound more threatening than it was. Her husband and half-brother kidnapped Till and lynched him. They were initially acquitted, but later admitted to killing Till. Two grand juries considered Carolyn Bryant's involvement, but declined to indict her. Everybody knows now that Carol Dunham has died at 88 years old. And I believe things happen for a reason. Personally, I find it very strange that she was able to live out her 88 years and nobody go find her and handle her. And also the men who did it, they lived out their years and then passed away unbothered. It just shows you, even though we have outrage, nobody's really going to pay the cost to do anything. Not saying that as a group of people, we have the numbers to do anything, but nobody is going to make that sacrifice. I mean, it's just going to be a situation where things happen to us and then we're outraged and we cry and the families cry and then some money might get paid and then that's it. And then you get a memorial and you get these, oh my God, this poor child, woman, man, whoever, and it's over until the next incident happens this woman lived her life out and Emmett Till didn't I will never forget the pictures of him in the casket that poor child did not deserve it and he was a 14 year old child and this woman lied on him and it just shows you everything you need to know about this nation because his cousin said that he whistled at her. Whistling at someone was not a crime. Whistling at a white woman. I don't believe that the majority of white people with that mindset back then would have hurt someone over that. They may have stood there and tried to stare them down and intimidate them, but it's nothing that you could murder somebody for and see it as justification in a lot of people's eyes. Some, but not a lot. But the biggest thing that I've noticed about this is the fact that when they went to trial for the murder of Emmett Till, ha the way it is reported, you can read almost every article. You can look at every news outlet that talks about this. They say Emmett Till's life was taken from him because he whistled at this white woman. That's not why people in the jury actually let them get away with it. It wasn't a whistle. It was the fact that there was a story concocted. I don't know if it was her or her husband or when she told him the real story of him whistling at her and she didn't say anything that he was gone beat her ass because we know back then women and I'm not t taking away colorless women's you know role and they were deep in it knee deep in it right there with their men but 
there was a hierarchy and at the time they did have to do what their men said if he hit her nobody body would come to her rescue that was something that was taken care of in the home and men were allowed to do that's why they talk about it now with quote unquote modern women and how they want to you know if the woman is getting mouthy or out of control they can just hit them because that's what they would do during that time so I could see her actually liking it or not caring and then her husband confronted her and what do they always do they are going to watch out for their a and then she threw that boy underneath the bus to save her own skin because it was either she was gonna get the hell beat out of her so she had to be the victim and concocted this story or she was quote unquote scared and it was Emmett Till's fault and he was doing things that were predatory toward her now I could see that happening I would bet money on that is what happened so she concocted this story I don't know if he was feeding her some of it or she did it because she was trying to save her skin and then because I can see her telling the story how yeah he whistled at me and then you know him being like her husband being like oh so you liked it or something like that You weren't going to tell me you weren't going to say anything. So you must like that N word or you like what that N word did. And he was getting aggressive, possibly yelling, going to hit her. And then she was like, no, you know, she didn't want to say anything. She was kind of out of it and shooken up. And he had touched her and grabbed her by the wrist and put his arm around her waist which anybody who believes that from a 14 year old, that's a goddamn lie. That is a goddamn lie. I don't believe that. That was made up to save her ass. So she gets up on stage and she doesn't say that he just whistled at her. She says that he touched her, that he assaulted her that he made lewd and lascivious advances on her. And once the jury heard that it wasn't just a whistle and it was lewd and lascivious touching and comments, that's why they let them off because, oh, I can understand if somebody was being aggressive and putting their hands on my wife or my daughter or whoever it was, especially those inward hands on my wife or my daughter and doing that, I kill them dead. And they let them go. I do believe that this came up right before her death, where people were advocating for her to be arrested. I do know there was some marches out there going on. Nothing ever came of it. Nobody ever decided to take care of it. But I think personally, and I know people are not going to like this and it's, oh, well, hey, this was her last chance before she died because it wasn't long ago that people that this was brought up before her death. She could have set things right and people were saying why didn't they go after the husband and the brother-in-law hey they're roasting on an open fire they're they're done for so to do that to a child to beat them like that and who knows what else I can't even go there I can't even think because I know how degenerate people can get when they feel like you know, somebody is beneath them and they're going to kill him and acting like a rabid dog. But 
this was her last chance to set it right and she didn't take it and she died in it and she is going to be held just as responsible for Emmett Till's death as her husband and brother-in-law. She made her decision and she died in her decision. And people are saying, you know, there'll never be any justice. There will be justice. But the thing that bothered me was what I saw in this article where Emmett Till's cousin said, our hearts go out to the family of Carol Bryant Dunham as a person of faith for more than 60 years I recognize that any loss of life is tragic and don't have any ill will or animosity towards her even though no one now will be held accountable for the death of my cousin and my best friend It is up to all of us to be accountable to challenges we face in overcoming racial injustice. And I'll go ahead and link this article. So anybody who wants to see it, they can take a look at it. That's the only part that I paid attention to. There's more information, but that's it. It's from the Chicago Sun-Times. And what I have to say about that is I am disgusted. My heart does not go out to her and her family or anybody that is related to her. My prayers, I would have prayers that everybody suffers in that family. And I hope that she suffered in her last days and it was painful for her when she went. That would be my prayer. And... I would hold animosity and ill will over her till eternity and her children's 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 children forever. Anytime anybody has that Dunham last name, it would be a problem. I cannot understand why black people do this. It's the Amber Geiger situation where he came off the stand hugging her. This has happened so many times. This forgiveness in the name of Jesus. I don't believe in white Jesus. And it's never reciprocated. It's never done in the other way. Somebody does you dirty, can't stand your guts, hates you from the inside out, outside in. And you're talking about how how loving and forgiving and because of white Jesus that you forgive them. Fuck out of here. That is so defeated. That is so weak. That is so disgusting. And it's disrespectful to your, your dead family member who was terrorized and brutally beat for no reason and over a lie and to save somebody else's skin. And you offer all these condolences, but yet we don't have that type of energy toward our own. It's yeah, throw that N word and under the bus, throw that N word in prison for the rest of their life. You know, you can't even stay stand your next door neighbors you haven't talked to your family members in 25 years because they owe they didn't pay you um five dollars back but you have all this loving forgiveness for somebody who cannot stand you it's weak it's embarrassing it's defeated and i wish it would stop you do not look benevolent you look weak you look, and and people don't respect that nobody respects that because on the other side if this had been a black man or woman who did this to a caucasian child there is no forgiveness i hope they get what they deserve i want to be there at the death sentencing i want to be there to witness the death and then I hope they burn in hell forever.
That's what it would be on their side. Other people have said, I don't see how these people forgive and they look past what happened. I couldn't do it. I don't understand it either because I couldn't do it either. Forgiveness is not for just to give out arbitrarily. Forgiveness is for someone who deeply, deeply regrets what they've done. And nobody in this situation has shown any deep regret. It's the same reason why George Zimmerman walks around here still. The reason why the judge who was taking advantage of underage boys to lower their sentences is still breathing to this day. And it's just, it's the secondhand embarrassment for me. This is a shameful part of our community. I cannot believe after him witnessing what happened to his cousin and as scared as he was over a lie over something that didn't happen he did not touch that woman he did not put his hands around her waist and she said it before she died that's what she was talking about not the whistle it was the actual touching her he never did And I believe that the FBI or on at least on a federal level, they could have done something about that, seeing how she admitted that she lied. And that would have been the part that she lied about to get them off in a court of law. Some of some of these stories really bother me because I remember seeing Tamir Rice, which I correlate him and Emmett Till because I remember seeing a picture of him and I looked, glanced at him slightly and I thought somebody had recreated a picture of Emmett Till until I actually looked at it and realized it was Tamir Rice and what happened to him. Never forgot that, never will forget that. Cannot forget the picture of Emmett Till and however long he had to endure what he endured and to hear his cousin sit up here and say that his heart goes out to this beast this demon made this rotten ass piece of ish burn in hell for eternity but i'll go ahead and leave it right here let me know what you think and i'll see you in the next one